What if you have some big sample library of, say, a piano and want to create an instrument from that? I'm also going to assume that you want to share or even sell that instrument. There are two issues to take care of. First, the sample locations, and second, preloading. So, about sample locations. When you installed MSound Factory, you have specified the sample folder in the downloader utility, where all the samples are now. Simple rule is, put all our samples there as well. To check where the samples are, you can either run the downloader again, for example, by selecting Menu, Download and Install Products, or check the settings. In my case, it's in C Drive, Samples. Let me first import a sample located directly in C Drive, so not in the sample folder. The sampler remembers the entire path. Now, let me move the sample into C Drive Samples and import it from there. The sampler omits the beginning. It stores the relative path. That's a good thing, because it means that now you can move the entire sample folder anywhere else, and the sampler will always find the samples as long as you set the sample path properly. And it will work like that for users of your instrument as well. Back to my piano. I'll navigate to the sample path, create a subfolder, Awesome Company, which is my company name, and from there, a subfolder, Awesome Piano Samples. And I'll put the samples into this folder. The inclusion of company and instrument names makes sure your samples will not collide with other samples. Now I can import the samples. Let me check a few regions. Yes, the paths are relative, all is fine. Let me play a few notes. Now there's the second problem. Every time I load my piano, M Sound Factory needs to load all the samples. That takes time and consumes a lot of memory. So it's time to introduce sample banks. A sample bank is just a big file containing lots of samples in a highly compressed and encrypted form from which M Sound Factory can actually stream the samples. That means that when you load your instrument, only a tiny portion of each sample will be loaded and the engine will load the rest of it when needed. The benefits of using a sample bank are smaller size, faster loading and streaming, and protection against stealing your samples. So let's create it. First, I'll save my current settings as a preset, just in case I need to go back later. Next, click Menu, Compile, and Assign Sample Bank. I'll put it into the Samples folder, Awesome Company, Awesome Piano, and name it Piano. Compression bits is an important option. It lets you select the compression bit rate. The lower the number, the smaller the sample bank will be, and with the minimum being 16 bits, the loading will also be faster. Note that the encoder uses a kind of normalized encoding, which means that it really squeezes as much quality from the 16 bits as it could. But I'm an audiophile and want my piano to be awesome as the name suggests, so I'll use 18 bits. And OK. Let me save the settings as a preset as well. Notice that all regions are now using the sample bank. Let me reload the original preset.
It takes quite some time to load, right? Now, let me load the new preset, which uses the sample bank. Much faster. Sounds the same. What would happen now if I load the original preset and try to compile the same sample bank again? It worked nearly instantly because the sample bank already includes these samples. So the compile and assign sample bank feature only finds and selects the samples from the sample bank. Can I add more samples to that sample bank? Yes, you can, the exact same way. The compiler tries to search for each sample and if it isn't pre-sent in the sample bank, it will add it. Handy if you have multiple microphones, each in a separate sampler. Speaking of multiple microphones, let me load the Monastery Grand. It includes three different microphones, one sampler per microphone. The challenge here is to make sure that all of the samplers will use the same sample every time. And that's simple in M Sound Factory. Simply select the same sample sync channel in the region selection panel in each of the samplers. Then you need to make sure there's the exact same set of regions in each. And that is also easy to manage. Click Menu, copy settings of all regions in one of the samplers, and paste settings of all regions in the others. Finally, we may want to check the Lock Sample Bank option in the menu. When you do this, the sample bank will be locked. You will not be able to add any more samples to it and you won't be able to use it in any new samplers. Why would you do that? If you have a great set of samples and you don't want anyone to steal that from you, this is another layer of security. Now you know how to manage big sample sets. If you want to make actual instruments, check the small tutorial series about that. The link is below.